All right, going to do a video documenting some of the Roman Catholic heresies that are still out there. And these heresies are not just light matters. These heresies often are the, oftentimes are pretty serious heresies. They're not just, you know, a matter we can just agree to disagree on. So let's get right into documenting these Roman Catholic heresies. Now, one thing the Roman Catholic Church does not believe in is they don't believe in this book. They claim they gave the world this book, but they actually don't. They actually burn people at the stake who would read this book and study from this book and not accept the Roman Catholic traditions of men. The Roman Catholic Church despises the Bible. It's that simple. They despise this book right here. And their heresies, via their heresies, they prove that. So I'm going to read this article from David Cloud's website. Don't agree with David Cloud on everything. Uh, I would have some disagreements with him on some various issues, but he has his article here about Roman Catholic heresies documented. And let's read it. So it says, Many of today's evangelicals and fundamentalists uh, have an astounding ignorance of Roman Catholicism. The average bookstore does not supply materials that expose the truth of Rome's heresies. And the popular uh, syndicate radio preachers and evangelical authors are nearly silent on these matters. In this article, we quote from two of the most up-to-date official pronounce pronouncements of Catholic doctrine, the Vatican's Second Vatican Council, and the New Catholic Catechism. So the Vatican II restates Catholic heresies. The Vatican II Council, basically what's going on is that the Catholic Church never changed. They still believe all the same heresies and false doctrines as before. Let's see that right here. He's going to document it. Second Vatican Council was an official Catholic doctrinal con uh, con convocation, convocation lasting three years from October 19. 62 to December 1965, and attended by nearly 2,400 Roman Catholic bishops. It was led by two popes, John Paul, again, I can't read, no, right? I'm not good at reading, memorizing no Roman numerals. But then you got Paul V. Uh, these are not just the pronouncements of, of a Roman Catholic apologist or even of a pope. Pope. These are the most authoritative doctrinal pronouncements of the modern of, of modern Roman Catholicism. Publications cited in the following quotes: Vatican Second Vatican Council, the con con Conciliar and Post -con Conciliar. Hope I'm saying these words right. Documents. This volume is published by the Roman Catholic Church and contains the following uh, imprimatur, imprimatur, a Latin word for letter to be printed, showing it has been approved for publication by the Catholic hierarchy. Walter P. Uh, Kellenberg. D.D. Bishop, Rockville Center, October uh, October twelfth, nineteen seventy five. So here's the heresies. Here are basically the heresies, the, the serious, damnable heresies that the Roman Catholic Church still believes in and still uh, pushes and reiterates today. Let's see it. The Mass is a re-sacrifice of Christ, and this is what they say about the Mass. Hence, the Mass, the Lord's Supper, is at the same time and uh, in in basically what they're saying here is that. Is saying it's a sacrifice in which the sacrifice of the cross is perpetuated in memorial of the death and resurrection of the Lord, who said, Do this in memory of me. In the Mass and the sacrifice of sacred meal belong to the same mystery, so much so that they are linked by the closest bond. For in the sacrifice of the Mass, our Lord is immo immolated when he, quote, begins to, the, begins to be present sacramentally as the, as the spiritual food of the minister of the faithful, under the appearances of bread and wine, for it is in Christ, for in it Christ perpetuates in an unbloody matter the sacrifice offered on the cross, offering himself to the Father for the world's salvation through the ministry of the priests. That's Second Vatican, the Constitution of Sacred Liturgy, Instruction on the Worship of the Eucharistic Mystery, Introduction, C1, C12, page 108. So they're still reiterating this heresy that the Mass is just a re-sacrificing of Jesus Christ. What does the Bible say about this? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Really good passage that refutes this. Refutes the need for a re-sacrificing of Christ. And I'm sorry if I can't pronounce some of these Latin words. I'm just, I don't read, I don't read Latin. I, you know, everything we need is in the, in the, in the, in the uh, English King James Bible. You don't have to learn. I mean, I, I do have a Greek lexicon, but I don't. Uh, use it as much as you know, as much as a Catholic would use his Latin. I mostly just use my Greek lexicon to define certain words, but whole other issue. Hebrews chapter ten, beginning at verse uh, ten to fourteen, down to verse fourteen. Uh, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 
and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of god from henceforth expecting uh, till his enemies be made his footstool for by one offering he hath perfected for he perfected forever them that are sanctified so one offering he did it once and guess what it even says in verse 12 talks about in verse 12 how or sorry verse 11 how the priest you know would do daily sacrifices but they could never take away your sins that's your roman catholic priest right there doing daily sacrifices weekly sacrifices of the mass but it can never take away your sins another good scripture refuting the roman catholic mass go to romans chapter 6 another good kick at the roman catholic mass because here's the thing too if we have to continually re-sacrifice Jesus Christ, that would mean we have to be continually re-baptized as well. Let me show you that. Romans chapter 6. This went too far. Here it is. Romans chapter 6 verses 9 to 10. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him, for that for in he, that he died, he died unto sin once. Uh, he died unto sin once, but in that but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And you read the context about that, he's basically saying, you know, that if Jesus had you know, Jesus he died to sin once. When you get baptized, you're symbolizing you being dead to sin and rising again. It's a, it's symbolic, you read that in context. But if you read Romans chapter six, verses nine to ten, he basically is saying that, you know, if if Jesus if we have to you you could see it as this way, if we have to be you know, re continually re-sacrificing Jesus Christ every Sunday at Mass, that would mean that we had to be continually re-baptized as well, because we're having to continually be dead to sin and rising again. In, in a, you know, a salvation context, because they believe it's part of salvation. But Romans chapter 6, verse 9 and 10 totally refutes the Roman Catholic Mass. Because if you're having to re-sacrifice Jesus Christ, how come you're not being re-baptized over and over again? Because that would be the result of what you'd have to do as well. And there's other scriptures too, like John 19, 30, is finished, the sacrifice is done, it's finished. There's uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, which says he died once, but uh, the Catholic Church has, has set aside the word of God for their vain man-made traditions. Next heresy is that Christ is present in the elements of the Mass. Quote, it is in this, is it, in this sacrifice, Christ is present in a unique way, whole and entire, God a man, substantially and permanently. This uh, presence of Christ under the species, under the species, is called real, not in an exclusive sense, as the other kinds, as as if the other kinds of the presence were are not real, but par excellence. That Second Vatican, you know, the Constitution of Sacred Liturgy, Instruction on the Worship of the Eucharistic Mystery, Chapter One, uh, EP one hundred, page one hundred fourteen. Uh, quote: In a celebration of the Mass, there is proclaimed the wonderful mystery of the real presence of Christ the Lord, our Lord under the Eucharistic species. The Second Vatican Council and other magist magisterial pronouncements of the church have confirmed this truth in the same sense and in the words of those as those in which the council of trent defined it, it as an article of faith christ becomes present through an essential change in the elements that second vatican council constitution on a sacred liturgy general instruction on the roman missal forward three uh, page 154 so they believe that, that the eucharist is like literally that, that Christ is literally present in the elements of the mass. That is cannibalism, plain and simple. Let me turn to Leviticus chapter 17. Actually, let's go to Genesis chapter 9. That's a good passage to go to. Genesis chapter 9. Because that because this this thing of old, it's it's uh he's literally present in the Eucharist. That's cannibalism, plain and simple. And cannibalism, there's actually two scriptures that deal with this issue. First in the book of Genesis, chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, verses 4. Sorry, Genesis chapter 9, verses 4 to 5. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is it, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. For surely the, your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso, that's verse 6, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, but by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. You're not supposed to eat flesh and drink blood. He says, 
if there's blood in that flesh, you're not supposed to eat it. Okay? That's before the law. Now let's go under the law. Leviticus chapter 17, verses 10 to 12. Leviticus 17. Oops, went too far. Now I went too far back. Bear with me. I'm still getting used to the physical King James Bible using that. Okay, Leviticus chapter 17, verses uh, 10 to 12. And whatsoever men there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will set, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for, your, for the soul. Therefore I say unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. But when you're doing the mass, you're a violation of that. You're eating flesh and drinking blood. It's that simple. You are performing the sin of cannibalism. But let's continue. So they say the mass is a, the center of Christian life. Quote, the celebration of the mass is the center of the whole Christian life for the universal church, the local church, and for each and every one of the faithful. Uh, for therein is the accumulating, uh, accumulating action whereby God sac sanctifies the world in Christ, and men worship the Father as they adore him through Christ the Son of God. That's Second Vatican Council, Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy, General Instruction on the Roman Mystery, Chapter 1, uh, page 159. Christ is to be worshipped in the wafer. They, they, they teach this too. Quote, the reservation of the sacred species for the sick led to the praiseworthy custom of adorning the heavenly food, which is preserved in churches. This practice of adoration has valid and firm foundation, especially since the belief in the real presence of the Lord has has as an, its natural consequence the external and public manifestation of this belief. That Second Vatican Council, the Constitution of the Sacred Liturgy, Instruction on the Worship of the Eucharistic Mystery, Chapter 3, page, page 131. And they give other examples too, not going to read all of these. Uh, the wafer can be carried in processions. They believe that too. Quote, in processions of the sacred, the blessed sacrament is solemnly carried through the streets and a singing of hymns, especially on the feast of Corpus Christi. The Christian people uh, give public witness to their faith and devotion towards the sacrament at Second Vatican Council, Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy, Instruction on the Worship of the Eucharistic Mystery, Chapter 3, page 134. Masses for the dead, they believe that too. Quote, Holy Mother Church is extremely concerned for the faithful departed. She has decided to intercede for them to the fullest extent in every Mass and abrogates the special privilege on this matter at Second Vatican Council, Constitution on Sacred Liturgy, Apostolic Constitution on the Revision of Indulgences, uh, 5, Indulgences Not Attached to the Things and Places, Norms, that's page 87. Uh, the church, quote, the church offers a uh, paschal, uh, paschal sacrifice for the dead so that the dead may be helped by their prayers and the living may be uh, consoled in hope. That's Second Vatican Council, Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy, General Instruction on the Roman Mistral, uh, Masses for the Dead, uh, page 197. And they say the Mass must perform a strict accordance with Catholic tradition. So not, not the scriptures, but Catholic tradition. Wine can only be taken on special occasions. They believe that too. Again, I'll be linking this in the description. Here's one. Catholic traditions are an equal par with scripture. Quote, sacred tradition and sacred scripture are then are closely bound together and communicate with one another for both of them flowing out of the same divine wellspring come together in some fashion to form one thing and move towards the same goal. Thus it comes about that the church does not draw uh, her certainty about all revealed truths from the holy scriptures alone hence both scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal feelings of devotion and reverence that's dog the dogmatic constitution on divine revelation chapter 2 uh, page 182 or page 682 salvation is present is through the sacraments in the church they believe that too again i'll be linking this in the description but they still believe all these same heresies salvation is distributed by, by the pope another another wicked heresy uh, so again, they basically just affirm all the same heresies. You know, salvation through baptism, salvation through good works, uh, salvation through indulgences and ritual. All the, all the same uh, false doctrines and heresies that they have always believed. So there's not nothing much has changed in the Second Vatican Council. There's still all the same 
uh, heresies. They believe the Pope is infallible. All this other uh, false doctrine and heresy. All the same idolatry and all the same witchcraft and all the same, you know, pagan Babylonian religious practices. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. It's still a false religion. It's still paganism. It's still heathen, Babylonian, Egyptian, Greek, Roman religion repackaged. That's all it is. It is Mystery Babylon condemned in Revelation chapter 17 and Revelation chapter 18. It is a false religion, and it birthed other false religions like Islam, uh, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, and many others too. Talmudic Judaism has, has connections as well. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.